Good morning. Uh, I'm still doing these uh, rocky, rocky scenes using one of my photographs of one of the paintings as a sort of model, but I don't want to copy every one and just keep repeating myself. But really, these are lessons in in using your imagination to create something that doesn't exist, or in other words, it exists in principle and it's quite realistic but it's something you haven't cribbed from somewhere else. Nothing wrong with that of course, as long as you change it around a bit. But I, I've been doing the mountain streams inspired by the Welsh mountains, North Wales and Snowdonia. Um, but they could be anywhere. But I think I'm, I, my, my colours are fairly reasonable in that uh, we get a lot of rain in Britain and especially up there, not far from the Lake District, which gets an enormous amount of water. So um, I, I'm going to do some, some bigger rocks in the foreground and in, the, in, in this, uh, this, this sort of river that's going to come through here, this gushing. So we'll so we're, 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 we're put, put that in, just coming kind of tumbling down here, there and everywhere. And we'll put some great big, big rocks. Here and there, go 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 wild with them. Bit of uh, land coming up here, but great big rock in the middle there. Remember, rocks have got three dimensions, and this uh, this is the we're using the card. It's it's quite easy to show to show this boulders. Just, this is only a guide, I don't, as you know, I don't stick to it. We'll have, we'll have this coming down behind there, and we'll have, you've got to make the, 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 uh, the mountains look, look a bit different, one side to the other, so we'll just, do something like that. I'll put that in the other one, but but I don't want them to look, to look like a like a like a well model, should I say? So we've got all these different planes coming down here. Let's uh, always need your rubber handy. I've, I've taken to put my rubber in my little tray here in my box of easels because it has a habit of of wandering, and I get all angry when I can't find it. When I need it. So there we are. That's our that's our, our our scene. Water's coming down here, tumbling down there, over there. So make what we can of this. So we'll, we'll put some put some bushes on there and something on here, just to make it a bit more interesting. And we can put a big figure on, or a figure. Right. Okay. Palette. Lemon yellow. Raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, Payne's grey and burnt sienna if I need it. But the colour that I'm trying to steer clear of is the Payne's grey. I know the paintings look okay on screen but when you look at them in real life some of them are a bit dead. That's my bad painting maybe but the Payne's grey doesn't help. So I'm making my greys mostly out of the light red, burnt umber and uh, ultramarine. So I'll wet some paper all over which is uh, Fabriano, 13 by 15, uh, 30, 130 pound, 11 inches by 15 inches. Stephen Cronin put us all onto this, and it's a good paper for this type of work. And that comes from Grantham's. I would have thought they would have sent me a brush by now, a free brush for all the publicity I've given. But no, maybe one day one of their their salespeople will take a, take the trouble to look at who's actually recommending their stuff online. But anyway, that, whether they do or not, it doesn't change the quality of the paper. It's pretty good for this. And as it dries, it, it makes it quite easy to dry brush. And I didn't realise that until quite recently. Don't dry brush, try and dry brush over, over wet paper. It just doesn't work. But that's quite obvious, isn't it? So I, I, I'll use a bit of bit of the uh, 
this um, raw sienna to, to give a bit of warmth in the sky and to the general landscape. You can go most full over that. It's a general, general colour, it is a warm colour that unifies everything and we can put in a bit of blue, a bit of, bit of blue sky. And that will give a bit of colour to reflect into the, uh, the water. So a bit of, bit of sky cloud colour going over here. darker in a bit of it. The red's got, when I clean the palette a little bit of the tissue paper stayed behind in the red and melted it somewhat which is lovely. Right okay that's that a very interesting sky I think. I'll give it a re-clip and then we'll start to put in, do I need to dry it a little bit? I don't want that to dry to, to this will be hair drying. I'm going to dry that little bit there, a little bit, not entirely. So take your headphones off if you're listening. I just wanted to to dry the shine off of it. And now we can put in some oh we've got the sun shining now at last. So Bit of, bit of blue for this this one here just in there and then we'll have a warmer mix a bit of grey in with that I mean a bit of bit of burnt umber in with that bit of blue and this a bit this more solid one and we can put a bit of sienna back in there as we come down and then a nice warm colour in here coming down to the river, the tumbling stream and then while that is wet so I'm going to mix a bit of heavy tree stuff, a bit of yellow, look red just the primaries but really thick you need to take some of the moisture out of the brush. Look, almost tube quality. And then just just put some in here and there, along there. It needs to be thicker. Just to show some sort of trees. And there's no detail in that distance there really. Yeah, it might be a bit over here. But... Well, let's see what happens to that. That's, uh... Just ladling that one. Okay, now we can go in with the. Uh the mountain on that side. I'll just re-clip it again because it's grown. This is why you don't need to, sh to shrink your paper by soaking it, coming it around on, on a board, soaking it and then waiting for it to dry where it will shrink or stretch. It makes it uh, drum tight. Right let's um, come down here with that's, that, that one's nearer, that one's further away, so we'll have more blue, blue and ultramarine. I mean blue and ultramarine, Paint, uh, burnt umber and ultramarine. So we'll, let's get in there. Some nice umber. Oh, this is good fun, isn't it? Now, I'd, 
don't want that to be too dark then, but I, do, I certainly do on there to separate it from the bit behind. Could leave a little bit of a white margin there. Now we can put in some some green, mixing a bit of bit of yellow with with that, and I'll paint around the rocks. Left us some raw sienna in there as well. Water's going to come around there. A warmer colour in here, a bit of, bit of red. Raw sienna and the river's going to disappear, the stream's going to disappear from around there. Okay, so that's a rock in there. Okay, now while that's a bit wet, we can etch in some just some bits of rock just peeping over the parapet. Just a little bit of detail. Some in here, getting bigger as you're coming down. Okay, it just adds a little bit of interest, but be be a bit selective. Don't go too mad. You, you've got to try to justify why you do it. And that's a, just a bit of a change in there. Right. Okay. So that the, these are quite large boulders and. We, I'll put in some trees on there as well. Now let's, uh, let's go into um, this side here. That, that's a bit of cloud shadow there, I'll, I'll assume. And this is a warmer, a warmer colour here coming down. Oh, let's just kick in there. Change the colours. Warm, warm up a bit, and these are the rocks, big rocks. That's a bit. Right. Now, get in the rocks now on the other side. Some different colours in these, this rock here. Nice dark. All sorts of colours in, in here. A lot of blue though. Right, card. Big rock. Rocks. Right, okay, they're nice big rocks, aren't they? Save painting. And we can do the same on the other side, but, but really some of the Dartmoor landscape is like this. So let's put in some, some here. 
we had a big rock here, didn't we? So a lot of lot of colour. Mixing a lot of colour in here. Greens. Right. Now I haven't even looked at the paints grey. But these are the, the colours that are going to be scraped down into the shadows. So I've got a bit of card, well it's had my bit of card. Okay, here we go. So Right now, when that's dry, I'll model that. I'll, but I've got my my lights catching the, the, the top of the rocks are catching catching the the light coming from the sky. Here are the, the depths of the rock. I might even put some some um, some twigs and stuff coming up from there. Um, but I, it's it's just the depth. Let's just take some of the paint back over there if we can. See what happens. See there again. It's, uh, it's just a bit of texture that uh, just drag, dragged on. So I'm painting with the with the card. Okay. Right now we're getting somewhere up here now that's drying off so we can put in a bit of detail. So dark on this side so that's just overhanging here. I'm sure you do get this but I'm making this up as I go along. I can assure you I'm not copying anything other than just having a bit of fun with, with my paint. And you can do the same. Kind of a nice dark shadowy bit in there. Just clinging onto the edge of the mountain, and we can put a bit of yellow on there. Look, this amazing brush. Look, just using bits of it. We can uh, just put a bit of red in there. Bit of blue. Now we don't want to bring that forward too much. The texture. Well, oh, it's dry brushing now. Quite nice. A bit darker on the round of the trees. There, yeah, loads of colour in there, and we'll do the same over here, but but greener, I think. Don't want to compete with the other side. Dark shadow. This is where the detail is coming in. All right, okay. Uh, I could put in some. 
some rocks there. I think we should do these, shouldn't we? Let's get, get some movement in the uh, in the, the stream, the tumbling stream, the melt water, whatever. Put that blue up. Oops, don't want that colour. Blue, blue rocks there. Right, let's uh, dry my brush, clean it off, and with a little card, just, just take off and uh, shadow these things. Okay, not very good rocks, but uh, I want to. I don't want to put in more detail in those. I don't think so, other than maybe just show some grasses sort of sticking up here. Okay, now we'll put a bit of detail in here for the rigger. Now it's really quite a bit different now from the rest that I've done of this type of view. Well I, I hope it is anyway. It's See this tree, the tree overhanging here, I, I've lifted from my Ron Manson's paintings but I'm not copying what he's done, I'm just doing my own thing here. You need to take your some of the twigs, branches, just out of the canopies of these trees. Just gives a little bit of realism, I think. Okay, that'll do. I'm going to do the same over the other side, but we need some. hanging on. Very still stunted trees. Right, let's put in a few bits of and we'll do the water. Let's just get some of this in. Do the water, I think. I'll dry it off, so I'll take your headphones off now. Oops. Hold on, hold on. Right, now then, we've got plenty of greeny stuff in here as well, but we've got blue, so we do... Uh, 
they're supposed to be cutting the uh, Try that off. You need to leave plenty of white off. off. I think that's the, the trick. A little bit of green in there to reflect some of this. Right, no more than that, I don't think. Uh, one of these days I'll do a, I'll get, luckily get a really good good one. Right, now, um, a bit of a figure standing on, on the hill here. On the hill here. So I will uh, need to be fairly generous with him because it's going to give scale to everything here oops squeeze the stick here yeah well that's got a bit heavy isn't it Just wanted a uh, tiny little thin stick. Okay, need to do. These are not too bad. Right, there's not much else I want to do with that. Uh, put a few few fronds in. A few fronds. Right, I'll sign that and put it in a mount. There we go. A bit of tape. A bit of tape. Hold the picture in place. Then we'll see what we've done. Now, I wouldn't say it was any better or worse than any of the others, but I need the practice of doing this as well. And uh, Okay, well there we are, that's uh, quite reasonable, nice big rocks this time. Painting big big rocks in a, in a, a mountain scene. Uh, let me know what you think. I'll zoom in, it's the middle figure. Looking for his sheep. Right, they're my bosoms. And my lovely rocks. Look, lovely loads of colour in them. Red brings them forward. My water still needs a bit more polish. And there's my other side. No, I think they're good. And I know they might be cliches, but why would you want to paint? rocks with a brush and spend hours doing it when you can do it in seconds with a, with a piece of card. You can't do it with the critical oil of course but this is watercolour. I think that's quite a nice picture. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.